Hi, today we will be learning fundamentals of procedural texturing. We will start by creating a plane and to create some shapes we need uh, coordinates. So I will explain how object and generated work since we will be using those two very often. It's important to understand how, how they work because you won't be seeing the, the results in numbers when you apply math. And the only way to really understand what is going on is you have a good understanding of how each coordinate work. In the case of generated, it is relative to the object. The scale goes from 0 to 1, and for each axis, the 0 is located on the point of the object that is located on the higher negative value of that axis, and the point that is on the higher positive number of that axis will determine where the one value is. If we change the shape of the object and we move a point higher in, in negative value, it will become the, the new zero for that coordinate. Now let's take a look at how object works. On this case, we will find zero on the object origin. And in this case, the scale is from minus one to one. We have, for example, for X, we have uh, to the left of the, of the center, we have uh, negative values and to the right, we have positive values. If we move the, the object origin, we can see that the zero point also changes. There is also an option to use other objects origin instead of the object that we are working with. If you pick the light, for example, in this case, When we move the light, it will change the location of zero. This can be useful for animation, for example. Now that we have a basic understanding of how those coordinates work, we will start to create something uh, using some math. What separate does is to take the information of the uh, three dimension coordinate that we, that we get from the texture coordinate and separate them in three different values. Now, now we only see x value, that's why we, we are seeing this, this shape now. When we apply math to a coordinate, it's not just one number that gets involved, it will do it for each point on the, on the object. We will add a math node and use greater than in this case. What it does is to compare two numbers, and if the number on top is greater than the number on the bottom, it will assign 1. If it isn't, it will assign a 0. So, if we set the threshold to 0, 
and we plug the x value on the top every number to the left of the zero that in this case is in the, in the middle in the center since they are negative values they are not greater than zero and become zero and every value that is greater than zero becomes one so everything to the right of the zero in this case will become one so now in, instead of a gradient look we have a defined shape with zero on the left and one on the right and for example if we change the threshold if we make it a higher number the limit will will move to the right and with a lower number would move to the left as you see we are starting to create some basic shapes Okay, let's try another operation now. We will use compare. What it does is to compare the first value with the second one. And if they are the same, it will assign a one. And if they are not, it will assign a zero. But it also, it also has a, a tolerance. For example, if we use zero on the second number, and uh, tolerance of 0.2 0 will be will be a match but also 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 and minus 0 0.1 and minus 0 0.1 uh, 2 also because of this tolerance So what we see is a white line that goes from minus 0 0.2 to 0 0.2 on our shape. Okay, now we will do the same thing with the Y axis. We duplicate the math node with Ctrl D. As you see, we have the same shape, but on the y-axis orientation. And now we will use another math node to mix them. Remember, what it does is to apply this operation to every single point of the object. So where x and y are zero, it remains at zero because it is adding where one axis is one and the other is zero, it will be one now. And on the intersection in the middle, we have a value of one on X and one on Y. So it becomes two. I want to take the opportunity to explain what clamp is if we tick this box it would limit the range from zero to one so everything above one will become one and everything below zero will become zero you can see how the center that was two becomes the same brightness as, as the parts that have a value of one Okay, we will untick that for the moment. We will add another greater than operation. Set the threshold to 1.9. And since the only region that has a value of 1.9, it's the cube on the middle. That's what we will end up with. Okay, now we have a cube. And we can alter its size with the tolerance. 
and also its location if we change the value of the compare. Now I will show you how to organize all your setup to manage all the features or the values you want from a single node. Select everything but the material output and press Ctrl G. When you create a group, you will have a group output where you send values outside the group and a group input where you bring values from outside the group. I'm checking at what number the cube touches the border so I can limit the movement to that value. Now we plug the value to the group input, press N to see the menu, and here we can change the name, the default value, and limit the range of its movement. Now we will repeat the process for the vertical movement. You can exit the group with this button. As you see, we now have a more organized way to move the object on a single node. You can also add keyframes to animate these values. Now we will use one value to affect the size on X and on Y at the same time. You can also use this output as a mask to do all sorts of crazy stuff. Well, I hope you have a better understanding of how procedural texturing works. And now that you have a basic understanding, we can start creating more interesting stuff. And I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.